everybody, it's Simon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today many of you are going to be brave and paint this gorgeous metallic green beetle with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to show you a lot of techniques that will help you do those metallic effects and start to understand how in painting we get these effects like metals, like water, like fog, because it's kind of counterintuitive. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He tracks me with all of our cameras so that you can get right up in the action of my brush and really understand what's happening so you can really see the color mixes. I'm going to explain every single step so that if you've never done this before or if you're just needing a refresher, it's really going to help you drill that in and succeed at it. You'll notice that we have one of our gritting references right here. Mm. But fear not, there is also a traceable and also a reference without the grid. If you check the description below, it will take you to our website where those are available for download for free. So you can use a traceable, you could use the grid, or you could just use freehand and use the reference, depending on where you're at in your art journey. And remember, none of those things are wrong. They're just process. I'm so excited about today, and I'm so excited about this beetle. I, I love this particular type of beetle. I grew up, and they used to buzz and fly around um, in our house in California because we have mulberry trees. So uh, I know that they're like big, giant, shiny, fabulous kind of ladybugs. They're like a ladybug who was like, red is not fabulous enough. I got to go <laughs> full shine rainbow. It reminds me of that crab in Moana that sings a shiny song. Oh, yeah. That's what they remind me of. But I didn't know that until like I heard that song. And then I was like, oh, Japanese beetles. That's true. Hmm. All right. I'm ready to jump on in if you guys are. Oh, yeah. Let's come on. Let's go. All right. All right. So here we have our little reference. Again, you can download this. Normally, we do this as two videos. But, but today we, is a special day. Today is a special day because we just released a collection of 21 new, <laughs> very special music art experience videos for you guys, kind of to address some stories that you shared with us. So we knew that was a lot of content on the channel, and we didn't want our brave beetles to lose the grid in the sea. <laughs> new videos <laughs> so we just decided to just bunch this up if you're just going to do the traceable we're going to paint the background gray and then put the image on but i'm going to show everyone how to use the gritting method to succeed at getting an image on their canvas from a photograph if they don't already draw remember there are a lot of free tools online to grid any photo so this technique won't just work here it will work on all of your projects once you learn it so it's super useful and I have some wishes like we like to do. Mm -hmm. So our first wish is like, um, we just want to wish safety. I have, I have a friend, Audie, and, and she's been under uh, a lot of tornado warnings. We have other friends that are in areas that are regularly flooding. So just wherever you are in the world, if you're going through a storm, if you're going through unexpected weather, I wish you safety and I wish your power on and I wish that everything is safe and everyone you love is safe. Um, and then also we wanted to wish uh, safety for all the first responders that come in and make sure people are okay during those events. And then I personally wish that our new series of videos, that they go out and they find the people that they can help and help uplift and inspire to be creative and also to help relax. The mods have the playlist if you'd like to check it out. It's 21 videos that are 5 minutes and 55 seconds. So mm -hmm. you got that kind of time, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, you know. Just a little bit, little a little bit of chill spark. out here and there. You guys might notice if you're regulars of the show that this is a new paint. I am actually been uh, testing the acrylic line of paint, which is a Senlier's professional line. Mm. So we've done the abstract, the Senlier abstract, which is their student line. And now I am trying its professional line. Look at this monster tube of white. <laughs> I love enough? that tube. It's like, it's, <gasps> it's, it's, it's a, is it a tin tube? It's a, yeah, they're metal tubes. They're metal tubes. I'm not sure if it's tin, but they're like, they're awesome because it's a brick O paint. It's a brick of paint. It is a brick of paint. I'm going to clean all these caps after the show too, because I'm going to be really good and not get them all hogged up like I always do. <laughs> so I put out titanium white and Mars black. If you check the description below or the webpage, you're going to see a very complete color list. So no matter where those colors come out, you know what they are. The note I want to give you is that for the cadmium orange, the only time you want to use that cadmium orange is if you're using student paints because your colors may not mix a bright enough orange for you to get the effect. If you're painting professional paint, Holbein, Matisse, Golden, Acrylique, you don't, you're going to just do the cad red light and the cad, uh, cad yellow and you'll get the same effect. So it's really just about what you're painting. Are you ready to paint the background in? Uh, yeah, I can more watch you do it. So pretty simple. It's a fairly dark uh, gray background. 
So we're going to want to make a nice little plop of dark, dark gray, like you do, <laughs> or like we do. I'm using an artist knife. This is a trowel cranked artist knife. Uh, very often we call them palette knives, but actually palette knives are slightly different than artist knives. However, you know what? On the listing, they're going to call them palette knives anyway, so we're going to just be simple <laughs> and talk about things as you're likely to see them out in your, your local art store. Okay, let's put our wishes into the universe by grabbing a big brush. This is a short-handled number 30, ruby satin, so it's great for acrylic painting. I'm going to dip it in water like this, drag off the extra, come load up. You'll notice I'm doing the flip load, and just paint the entire surface this dark gray. Doesn't that seem nice? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So excited about the new videos. I'm having a hard time even teaching today's three who video. It's exciting. It so, really is. Now you're you're painting this on uh, a very monochrome background. Right. We're gonna do one color. Um, this is gonna give us the basis. We're gonna render in our grid and then we're gonna draw in our beetle. This will let us do the flowers. I took the color out of the background of the photo because I wanted the beetle to be showcased. Mm. Because in this, if, if you painted with me for a while, you know, sometimes when I'm demoing a very particular thing, I will make the background or elements of it uh, black and white light with Daenerys's um, hair and uh, the Guy Tang hair videos. So you make those black and white so that you guys can focus on the areas where your attention should be. And also, it's a wonderful graphic technique that you can use. And you'll notice I'm just getting this all in nice coating nine by 12 surface. I don't remember what that is in centimeters. I really need to upload my, update my playlist again. <laughs> I'm gonna rinse this out. Remember, you wanna keep that acrylic paint out of your brushes. You're gonna wanna wash these after every video session. And for those of that you have been waiting, I'm gonna give you a peek of something that'll be on the website probably over the weekend. So. <laughs> I'm going to get my hair dryer, which is hopefully plugged in. Let's see. It is plugged in. And so she can just dry that off and make sure that it's, uh, so the a little distracted by what's going on in all of the other technical world here. But the reason why she's actually using the hair dryer there is to make sure that that surface is dry so that when you're putting your next layer on there, it doesn't pick it up. And if, if you use it on the lowest heat setting, then it doesn't cause color shift or shrinkage and you know the paint will stay nice and uh, stiff as it should but heat causes it to get soft and cause all problems when you're doing the next layer so no heat lots of air let it cure make sure that there's no tacky parts where you might pick up a little bit of paint with your next layer and you should be good to go i think we're good to go all right you'll notice we didn't have that much color shift on this at all again whoa that was gone because this is professional paint and oftentimes the color shift on that will be reduced. That's one of the benefits of, uh, one of the many benefits of upgrading your paint to a higher quality paint. But you know, you gotta respect the pocketbook too. So it's all a juggle. I have a T-square here and it is a 12 inch T-square. It lets me do these nine by 12 canvases very, very easily. I have a reference already prepped for you that's gridded on a one inch grid, nine by 12. I'm gonna get a General's charcoal white pencil and I'm gonna make some nice one, Oh, good. This paint is working really well for the pencil today. So you'll find some of the acrylic paints will take the charcoal better than other acrylic paints. Just about their formulation and how they are. You know how they are. Do you know how they are? <laughs> <laughs> so this process basically goes through and you create a grid on a reference image. And then you also create um, a grid that matches it. Um, on your surface, and then you simply render in what you see in each individual little square. And how that helps you if you don't already draw is a lot of times, if, if you can write um, and doodle, you can draw, seriously. You really, really can. But there's a lot of skills that are involved. It's like, it's like math. You can do math, but somebody needs to explain some of it to you. Otherwise, it will seem really hard and impossible and mysterious. So it's okay to have to build up a skill set for something, if that makes sense. Don't ever feel bad about that. doesn't make you not an artist because you're not like freehand rendering everything. And it doesn't make you an artist because you're freehand rendering anything. 
I'll tell you the secret of what makes you an artist. Hmm. Creating art. Seriously, that's it. All the rest is just pretension. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I get it if somebody's like a fine artist because that has a particular point, has a particular goal. Um, but for the purposes of what is an artist, it's somebody who makes art. So if you're making art, you get to call yourself an artist. I see people struggle with that a lot. When can I call myself an artist? You know, and they and they set up a condition like my art has to be like so and so's or so particularly good or I, sh I need to be able to paint this particular thing or I need to be in galleries or they just create a bunch of conditions of which nobody else is involved. <laughs> right. They're just your personal conditions for success. And it's silly. Just call yourself an artist. If you're making art, you're an artist. All right. So I'm just making sure my T square is nice and level as I make the cross grids. And you can see why it's necessary to have at least a 12 inch because that's what lets us uh, get across the entire canvas. They make these bigger. There's 18 inch ones. There's, uh, uh, gosh, there's almost like three foot ones or they're like a yard, I think, um, for draftsmen who, you know, do like architectural stuff um, or engineering. I think the best ones out there on the market are uh, the Pacific Arc ones. Hmm they're really really made for being out there in the oil fields happen to draw things rugged conditions but this is like this westcott and then artist loft has them and they should be about three bucks and well, it'll I, work for you i have to say there's unexpected uh everyone's really excited about the sherpa soap that's coming are, are, are you guys excited yeah so it should I, be they there was a lot of questions about it we, next week it should be available in the stores so it, I won't even say the pricing. It's spectacular. It's all dried and cured. We have yeah. hundreds of bars ready to sell. Yeah. So it's yeah. awesome. You I've had to hold some back for my mom because my mom's like, because uh, she's been one of my testers the last couple of years while we worked on the soap. Um, so she's like sworn me to like holding hers. So as long as mom has hers, y'all can get yours. Yep. And we have my, my mom's in your cook. So and like, we need to, she's like, not kidding about it. <laughs> so I'll let you do your thing here. So. All right. Um, I'm going to come here. I am excited about it though. Clean your brushes though. After every single painting session, um, with whatever you use, that's the big important thing. I'm going to start here at this square right here and I'm going to find where the outer edge of my beetle comes in and exits out. And I'm going to just match it. I'm going to duplicate what I see in each little square. So I'm not drawing everything. I'm drawing just what's in this square. And then I come here and I might I'm going to scoop this back down and, and pay attention to how each line is impacted in each of these squares. Now, on a very complicated image like this, it's really good just to go square by square because it's kind of evolved. So if you really want your image to come out, just keep your concentration small. I've noticed on me, it's the only time I have any trouble is when I go big on it instead of just being in each square. Be in each square. I'm coming here and it's like his little end and I'll look like when does this end? What well, ends right there? And then this part is coming up here and I'm going to just follow what that line is doing. And so that's what you do. You go, what, where does this line go through this square? And then where does this line go through this square? And then how far into the square does this line go and then turn up? And then that line really comes right to here. See how we're doing? And we just pay attention to what is going on in each individual little square. Because that's how we're going to keep it, keep it just like the photo. I want it to look just like the photo. That is the job that I'm doing. I know I've got this little eye right here, right? And coming down right here from the back is that little eye. See how that's going? Beetles are such a foreign little creature. They have their journey, don't they? Yeah. So that's what you're doing. You're just like, how does this, how does this go? And you just match that up so you can get each effect. This little eye kind of comes back here. And I've just got to catch that. I'll say, oh, there you are. 
So you're going to be constantly looking and making adjustments like how does it go? What do we want it to do? We know this sort of comes out here. There he goes. So there's, even though this is a very complicated little dude, by using the little grid method, I can draw a lot better than I might think. Gridding does seem to help quite a bit. It does. It does. It keeps you from being overwhelmed. And an image like this can be quite overwhelming. You know, this is a really good way that you can map an image really on just about any kind of object. Any object. It works on anything. So like a dresser or a wall or... Yeah, seriously. It, you've got to be able to grid to mural. You know, if you've got a nice 60s van and you want to have a mural on the side of it, just saying, beetle would look cool on the side of a beetle. Maybe. So like you just, you know, if you're ever lost, you go one, two, three, four, five, and then you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and that's how you know where you are. You know, you just want to hatch those and follow that along. Now we got this little beetle thing happening here. You can make adjustments as you need to. He's got an interesting little point, right? That's right here. This is the bisect for it. So it comes into this square, comes down here, and comes down here. And there we go. So that's, that is the little bisect of his wing that I'm going to be dealing with. So those are things that you want to have going. I know he's got a little bit of kind of leg stuff here that I'm going to deal with. We've got this crazy complicated leg right here. So I'm bring it up, bend it over, and bring it down. This little friend comes up here. And we know that's going to come back this way. And I'm not, you could, I don't have to really get every little detail in. I'm not going to really struggle that much personally to get them in later. I don't believe. <laughs> But if you think you're going to get in as much detail as you need, come down here and put in this other little leg now. And it's like kind of crazy because it, it comes here and it does this little, little thoraxy thing. Now, now I'm thinking of Brax. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to notice there's some interesting little bug things that, that's true about like their legs and parts of them and how you want to pay attention to that. Now we also have some little flowers that are happening, but we're going to do those very out of focus. So you might, you can also use this to great success for flowers. You've really been struggling with your flowers. You can get great, great success on your florals with this. Okay, I'm going to come right here. Boom, boom, boom. See, just following. I just trust, trust the grid. Believe the grid. The grid knows. <laughs> it really does, though. And so these little sort of shapes back here, we're going to be very bokeh about them. And when I say bokeh, what I'm basically saying is that they're going to be out of focus. Soft. There definitely is a value, indescript kind of little thing that's going on, but they are going to be out of focus. Like this little guy right here. It's going to be way out of focus. I'm going to have all that in. You know, we're just going to talk about it a little bit. So, so that there's one here. And I'm going to have a little bit here, but I'm going to be very, 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 very. I say very, very again. <laughs> kind of uh, soft with it. Very soft with it. I know I'm going to make some nice little soft little wiggles. So once I've got that in, I need to look at what I've done and make sure I'm happy with my rendering. A little trick I can use is I can take a wet brush and kind of erase anything I'm not fully, completely loving. You know, so I can be like, okay, this here, that bug out here. And then right here is its bug out right here. Mm 
And then there's some fuzzy here that I might be dealing with. And there it comes in. So that's my thing is like, can I get the little bugging out that I need to get to be happy with that? And then I just start painting in my background in my black and white. How are we all doing with this? Really good. I'm going to get my uh, number eight cat's tongue because it just, uh, it's a point of filbert. It gives me a nice soft effect. And I'm going to just start to paint in these lighter values, these soft lighter values that I know I have on these little flowers. So this is sort of a soft light gray. And if I dry brush, I can keep those lines from being, you know, super sharp and that'll make them feel a little out of focus. You know, we can do some of the values that we're seeing in the flowers. So if there's some lightness right there, you can add that lightness. We don't want to get too much detail going again because we want the beetle to be the focus. So see how I'm keeping that sort of edge there very soft? Not uh, making it a super hard edge. There's a lot of ways to do that in acrylic painting. This is just one methodology of making sure that that gets done. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. I'm just going back and reading some of the uh, comments. The comments here. Yeah, while we paint in all these little petals. We're trying to stay focused on questions. Yeah, um, please do. I love it. I love questions. That's why, why we do these lives. So, th why is it that sometimes you paint things kind of out of intuitive order for some folks? And I know for me, you do that as well. Why is it you've decided to paint the beetle first and not the background flowers first sometimes? Like, you didn't paint all the flowers and then paint the beetle on top of the flowers. Well, he's most of this image, and I only want some of the flower structure. So it, it seemed like it would be kind of, unless I felt like having an exercise of painting flowers, just personally, it felt like to get the effect I wanted, the bokeh effect I wanted, it would be better just to do these softly here. So just like we're doing here. Yeah, it's very soft. But see, sometimes you don't, like, you didn't just paint underneath his little leg there. Why didn't you just paint the entire leaf? No, I, I want his little detail. I want to know how he's positioned. I can oh. save it. Oh. So you're just preserving that black yeah. space for I'm later just use. just preserving that space so I kind of know where that is. It's like, a, it's like having a little space that you can hold. I mean, but I'll paint over his mandible. I'm not going to really, you know, I'm not going to lose that into the painting. And I do paint quite into his leg. So it's just sort of a... There really isn't a right or wrong way to do this. I get asked this question a lot because sometimes new students go, well, there's, there's this way, there's this order of painting. There are principles of painting for your medium, like watercolors tend to go lightest to darkest. Mm-hmm. Right? Can be because they're nature. To, yeah, it can be difficult to go the other way with them. Can be. It doesn't mean there are no artists that don't succeed at that. Scraffito. Scraffito. That's right. So <laughs> that's uh, the removal of paint. I'm just coming here. And you'll notice I'm getting a lighter value right here. And then I'm just blending that back. Because, again, I want to put most of my attention to detail today on the beetle. It's beetle focus. We're beetle focused today. He's shiny. He's very shiny and I want him to be shiny. I do like these bits of white around him. I think they add some dynamic interest. So they are worth it to me to get in. Because they'll keep the background from feeling totally stagnant. If we just did a plain gray background, that might feel a little bit boring. Yeah, this has some dynamic floofiness to it. <laughs> Certainly some floofiness to it. And, it's, and notice how sketchy some of this is, right? It's not, it's not really, we're not trying to over-focus it. No, I, I, I really like that it, it, he definitely feels like he's crawling on flowers, but you're not too stressed about what kind of flowers. They right. Are. You don't want to be stressed about the kind of flowers. He's on. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool beetle on flowers, dude. That's what we want to know, right? It's a cool beetle on flowers.
right? So you can see me, I'm taking lighter, darker grays where I want it. This also kind of helps you warm up into your value, right? It's almost like doing that value study that we did during Acrylic April, which was so great. Well, I thought it was great. I don't know. Hopefully you thought it was great too. Hmm. I think they're great. Now I like these little sticks. So I'm definitely going to do those. The little. Yeah. I think those are the pieces of flour. Yeah. Bring some of this in here. Talk about this like there's something here. And then I'm going to definitely, definitely. Make sure you jump to opposite ends of the surface. Yeah. Well, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm coming in and kind of doing this distant little. You're testing if I know how to use the cameras. Totally. I want to make sure they all work. And I'm going to get back into and put out more Mars Black, and I'm going to get back in, and I'm going to take the grid out, and what we should have is a nice, slightly out of focus background. Yeah. Right? Pretty cool stuff. With this nice deep gray. Even deeper. There we go. And as you paint this in, you can start to see how the composition could be coming together. I find it super relaxing. Not as relaxing as my new video series, but overall still pretty relaxing. <laughs> da -da, da. Yeah. Sorry. I'm really proud of it. It was a lot it's, of work. No, it's, there were some folks who were saying how much they've already enjoyed it. Uh, Ami, I believe. Oh, hi, Ami. It. Yeah, she said that she really enjoyed them. She loves the new format. So I didn't want to. No, honey, to... I was just saying hi to somebody who was watching. <laughs> That's the tone in which I, I call my daughter into the room. I go, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a genuinely reasonable thing that she was confused there for a second. Good attention, kid. Yeah, it was. I'm kind of proud. Yeah. So, you know, you can find go through and find some pops of, you know, value that you want to, like, focus on. Right? Talk about. And then some areas that you're going to just... Leave kind of dry, crazy and dry. So that's kind of interesting, right? You know, and when we get there, I can always come here and I can be just like soft and soft and soft. And I can use my brush actually to even out of focus lines. Look at that. That is out of focus, this line. Mm. I can out of focus a line pretty easily just by doing a blend. You know, so you can have a soft focus, you can have a hard focus. I think the other thing that could be nice, and I'm going to put out some fluid paint to do this. I really, really like these little uh, espadrilles. Is that what they're called? The little stamens? Hmm. I, I you know. know, you took biology. and I mean, I took it, but I didn't ever get a good grade in it. <laughs> I took. <laughs> The other... I've got a uh, monogram liner here, which is one of my very favorite detail brushes. And I'm going to just I, give I, myself some little lines that are happening. I was in the other science classes, physics, and I didn't... Well, I, I, I was under the mistaken belief that um, biology would be easier because I thought there was drawing. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm totally easy. I can do all those like medical renderings super easy. There was no danger of me being a doctor, so I'm just going to very loosely. So this part is loose. It is very cool. And then we're going to come up here and you know, maybe just add some of these around here because they're fun. You can even put some right here as if there's a little flower. And, and that will help it feel a little flowerish. Right? So now we've got this nice little background. It feels a little flowerish. You can catch any places that you feel need. Distant petal. See how I'm doing along the beetle? I do. And I can come over this later with his 
with him and really get some good results. Now, I got to get in his base color. So we're going to be using phthalo green. I, I think his base color is super green. <laughs> super green is his base color. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. And then I've got some phthalo blue. I have a small amount of purple because there might be a couple places that I'm going to do some highlights with just, just a hint of purple. Let's put out some burnt sienna. Now I'd like you guys to notice that the labels don't really indicate the color inside the tube. So I probably will get a photograph of the paint swatches and get those posted on the website somewhere so you can see all the colors as they are. If you're looking at this line of paint, mm. it will help you make a decision. I'm going to put out some cad yellow. Boom, and screw this. The, ta the caps are pretty easy. I mean, I'm terrible with caps. And uh, as you can see, this is not an indicator of the ease of this cap because John does this with <laughs> <laughs> I can't thread nothing. It's a whole experience. John's going to thread it later. <laughs> Because you don't really need to sit there and watch me for 30 minutes trying to no, thread something. No, but it would be fun. I mean, you think it would be fun, but it ain't that fun, right? Sherpa struggles. Hashtag, it's real. <laughs> now, there was some rosiness to some of his back and his body. So I wanted to get this right here, some of our quinacridone magenta. And again, I've kept the diox purple to the side because I don't expect to be using it like right away. And so my first thing is I'm going to come in and get a really nice deep green. I'm going to take my green and a little of my burnt sienna. And we'll start with this base. I love painting bugs so much. Now, this is the uh, Holbein paint you're using? No, this is acrylic by Senlier. It is a French company. It is the paint of Degas and Van Gogh mm. and all the romantic artists. This comes from a little boutique in France, so you can get it in the U.S. pretty easily now. Interesting. So, because so. it's it's definitely got a little different sheen to it. it seems. Yeah, it's a it is a very interesting paint. I like it. I'd say it's definitely on par with everybody else. Mm, neat. This is the first time you're using it. <sighs> So. Yeah, I have been using it for our uh, relaxation videos to test it. Um, I often get sent stuff to test, and I like to do that. Th to this was a I gift like because we used, was a gift. we used all of the, their student paints, uh, yeah. and they were like, well, why don't you try some of this? And and we I were like, like, I'd be happy to. Uh, yes. Take paint, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will use it. <laughs> Well, my general rule is if people send me something, which they do, sometimes people send me stuff unsolicited. Mm. My general rule is if I don't love it, you never see it. Right. I just won't use it on the show. So by the time it makes the show, there's something about it that I intrinsically kind of like. Come around here. But it's always good just to be clear with people that, you know. Yes. Yeah. No, is, it's, it's the law, it, too. So. You, oh, yeah. But I mean, like, you know, we don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be weird, but you got to be clear because it's you know, the law. It's so weird to be like, Cinnamon and I are this husband and wife that really love art, that sit in our little studio and try to honestly and earnestly make these videos for helping you guys. But we forget that there's like a whole big industry and world around us that, would, that like sometimes we have to make sure that we're complying with. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's just, yeah. It's strange. So like one of the things we're trying to solve on the soap is to make sure that our Canadian Sherbets can get it oh, easily. That's right. And we're ha we're talking to uh, Kings Art and Frame to see if there's a way we can all work together to make sure you guys could get the soap with like reasonable prices and not crazy shipping and duty and weirdness. That is the exciting thing. Working that is with the exciting thing. We're working really hard on that and they are super trying to help us get that done. We get to work with people all over the world who love art as much as us. Yeah. And, and that's been true. pretty really blessed. Do. So I'm just right now getting in these little basic areas of, of him and getting a really deep green going. 
that's going to help me build up on him a wonderful section of color. You know, and I, I'll get in and do his uh, stuff in detail in a little bit, but I can get the basic shapes and effects as I go pretty easily. And we're going to come here. And then we've got this nice, interesting little kind of angle. And if you go over, you can always like paint a shape back. So because it's a nice, simple gray, I can be like, oh, that went a little bit further in than I would have wanted. And I can either take my wet brush and take it back. See? Ooh. Good quality paint. <laughs> you just yeah. erasered it. Good quality paint generally will let you erase something if you need to. <laughs> so I'm going to take my yellow and my had red light and I'm going to make this bright cat orange and then I'm going to mix a little bit of my green into that and start to come here so that I'm going to be able to work in the basis of this wonderful I blend some of that right here it's just fun to put this color in start talking about the places that I can do this. I'm still working my number eight cat's tongue, but you could use a filbert just as effectively. I'm just making sure I'm catching little bits of colors and places that I could use it. This blocking in period will help me quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm trying to get him worked out. Especially that reflectiveness, huh? Yeah. Because you don't use metallic, I have, I have the best metallic paint on the planet, which is Holbein's new Chroma Shine and Chroma Pearl. Man, there's nothing like it. Uh, I have a bunch of it. I hope it's in the U.S. soon. Bug your local art stores to carry oh, yeah. it because it is awesome sauce. That stuff is crazy. It's not cheap, but it is awesome sauce. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch water and sippy sip. Hmm. And say hi to everybody real quick. Hello. While we're letting this have a minute and take a couple questions and okay. then get into the next section, segment see. of it. All right, uh, one, two, three. Oh, you're going to go over there. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, oh, look, I can find another button still. I remember where they were. So you can see when you get back from it, those values are nice. They're not too in focus. And then as we pull the beetle in focus and get really sharp with all of his details, he's going to pop. And that's really, you know, when you're painting gloss, you're paint, painting metallics, that's where you really have to focus is those values, where the highlights are, where their shadows are. You guys were super excited on the uh, lamp. So here's what I'm going to say. I really want to microwave my coffee, mm -hmm. so I'm going to make up a couple questions that I've seen in the past. And I'll answer so, them when you microwave your yeah, coffee because I'm you so long-winded. Is, is you could talk about um, yes, the make videos. comment about talking now because they, they were they were asking about the um, the videos, the five minute videos. So you could say something about those. Okay, you could say something about your soap that's coming up and okay. like you know how we like how we've gone about making it and the history of that. Okay, and then I don't know that'll give you enough. I'm going to make a coffee. Those are questions. I'm oh, happy to do oh. that. I'll be back. Um, so the new videos that just came out, there are 21 of them. It is exactly two hours of relaxing music art therapy. Um, oh, no, you don't, it doesn't need a microwave. It, I put it in the good sippy. This is the Pioneer uh, Woman Pioneer woman from, from Walmart. It's real good. It's not expensive either, but it's real good. Oh. I'm not sponsored by any of those people. Um, this is an opinion that I have that you may or may not agree with. Okay, so uh, they're each five, about five, six minutes because it's five minutes and 55 seconds. They all have really calming, um, peaceful piano music. They demonstrate techniques. If you've watched any of the Q-tip videos, you've seen it. If you've watched my palette knife videos, you've seen these techniques. These are techniques that many of you know. Now, if you want a tutorial from any of them, if you're like, I love this so much, but I need that full tutorial, there is in the iCards an opportunity to vote it up. This is, do you want a tutorial or not? And you can vote that up. And if it gets enough votes, I'll make a full real-time live tutorial. The other place you can find that is in the Facebook group, which I do link in the description down below. And we'll put a full vote up there about like, hey, what of these do we really need a full tutorial about? Because you guys love them so much. And this is a good thing for us to learn because I have about 60 more of these in the can. John kind of figured like, I do a lot of designing. I do a lot of painting. I do it every day. And this was a great way to capture some of that beauty and share it with you and let you guys give us some feedback on what you'd like to paint. And also, 
give you a playlist that you can just throw on and know that it's safe. Uh, you can put it on for the kids to sleep at night because it's just going to go through that playlist. So what's it going to be? It's going to be beautiful art. There's a wait for it moment in the middle of every video. Those of you who have seen it, give it a thumbs up. If you've seen the wait for it moment, there's an extra magic. So it's not hmm. just a time lapse. That's well, not what it is. Not just a time lapse or just a demo. It's magic. It's restorative. So if that's what's going on with those. I'm you back. can watch one or you can watch all 21. And my kids love them, so I know yes. they have to be good because the little ones are like, ooh, I love it. And they had me put it on a playlist for them to go to sleep last night, and they crashed right out. So I think they're effective. Uh, soap. Um, so uh, a couple years ago, I found out that all the soap on the market was not made for acrylic brushes, which explains a lot of my experience that I've had washing my brushes. And so you've got Richesons and you've got Generals and you've got all these different soaps, but they're made for watercolor. They're made for oil and they do clean acrylic brushes. But quite frankly, so does Dawn. Yeah. You know, but the problem is, if you notice, the paint gets up in the ferrule. And once the paint gets in the ferrule, it ruins the brushes. Mm. So I spent uh, a, about a year doing research, talking to off the grid mom bloggers, talking to acrylic paint chemists, uh, talking, talking to like professional soap manufacturers about what breaks down acrylic paint. And then took that information, did some testing and bought a bunch of crazy stuff. Did some testing. The house smelled really good while I did and pretty much figured out these are the things that really are safe, are natural. Um, so you can have it near your kids. You can have it near your pets are great for synthetic filaments, but still safe for natural. Mm -hmm. They'll still, uh, except this time they're for acrylic, but they will wash oil brushes and watercolor brushes. Now, you don't make the soap here in our kitchen though. No, I, I am. I was going to learn how to make soap, but then it, <laughs> our first made a common, which was like a year and a half ago. Yeah. I met, um, this wonderful woman, uh, Susan Woolridge gave me a bunch of paint, uh, soap mm -hmm. and it was like really nice. And I was like, Oh, I could sit down and talk with her about my ideas. So I talked with her, we left, she wrote us back and she said, I really like, uh, to help you do that. Like to help you realize that. And so we worked on that. Um, then we did a bunch of testing on you guys out in the wild. And you guys, now you guys, a lot of, there's a lot of sample soaps out there. So there's a lot you of sample guys soaps. have been trying this out for a little while. Because we wanted to make sure that what we thought it was, it was. Yep. This is not, it's like you buy a bunch of materials and you make it and then it cures forever. It, it's been two years of solid work and research to make something that I think is very unique. Mm -hmm. and special in the market well, look, and again my mother likes it so i don't know what better feedback you can get than that because she is picky well, let's let's keep telling while we're going huh let's tell them while we're going where while we're going where? while we're painting oh yeah i know i need to get back to it yeah okay <laughs> well you said do that and i did no, no, that now i'm I gonna do, get back to painting but you can t keep telling tell them while you're painting <laughs> no i can't i, know. I can't oh. talk and paint no i can <laughs> so start coming here you're going to want to start thinking about like these colors and these values and these hues I'm going to put out a very special product called Gold, uh, Gloss Glazing Liquid Slow Drying Extender for Acrylic Colors. Okay. Now, always read your bottle, your jar, your tube, because oftentimes these things are named the same thing, and they are not the same product across different brands. Like Glazing Liquid and Liquitex is not this, not remotely this. It is a glaze that dries super fast, and you have to allow it to be completely dry before you can do the next layer. This is a retarder that lets you glaze, so it is the only one that is beginner friendly, right? I'm not paid by this company. I'm just an addict <laughs> for this product, but it really is. All the other retarders are really beginner challenging, but if you're a beginner, this one, this one right here is beginner friendly. You can't goof it up because you can really mess up a uh, painting with um, either traditional glaze or traditional retarder, like mess it up. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to blend my paint longer. It's going to allow me to do glazing techniques in the same area, and it's going to really help me succeed at this metallic effect. It's going to be my buddy. So I'm going to load up my brush with some of it, right? And that's going to also help the paint from, like, not drying so quickly on my brush. And I'm going to start working here. I'm going to start doing some lighter values and pulling them back. So I'm going to get a little of my yellow into my green. I've got my glaze. And let's come here and start to talk about this. And when I say talk about this, what that really means is that in the painting, there are these sort of conversations that we have with form, shape, and color. And you can see I'm just pushing this out here, and I can very softly, I've got my number four cats down here. I like these because they have a soft blending edge, so I can do this sort of very soft effect. 
and work it out and still do traditional painting method. Hmm. Very helpful to me. You're going to want to really look at your reference because you want to catch those values. You're, you're going to be catching the definite little subtle tones. Subtle. Yes, yeah, subtle. Which I'm not in general. <laughs> in this particular case, I'm going to need to be. Again, getting this. So here you can see I'm starting to get into the, the uh, phthalo green a little stronger. And then you can get into the blue here. Putting that around here. Going around the blue. And then if you need to get back into the dark color, you just go back into the burnt sienna. And the phthalo green. See how we're doing? We're going to blend that. And we're really, really, really going to work it. Work, work it, girl. Yep, we are. And just keep working it. I need to get into my lighter color. I can do that pretty easily. Come along here. And then I'm going to come around here. See, that's not that bad in that first step. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, you're going to notice a bunch of stuff is happening here. So, like, we've got a lighter blue-green that's going on, like, right here. That we can start to pull out. There's definitely some lighter green that's right here. And then another little piece that's there. I'm back into my orange and my green. That's a very powerful mix when you combine orange and green. I'm going to get my glazing liquid into it, but it's very, very powerful. And it's going to be a lot of what shows is like metallic, shiny color. You can't skimp on it. So take it right up to that center area and let's blend that out, right? See me wiggling the brush? What we're going to do, we're going to blend that out. You know, you can take another little bit of area here and be like, oh, yeah, I'm still here. A little bit, hint of it right there. I love the orange mixed into the green. Because it's interesting. Over here. And then start that first blend on this side. You know, where's the brighter, where's the brighter green and yellow? Get your glazing medium into it. Don't leave it out. Now we're talking about this little area here. Maybe add a little bit right there, right? Because we're starting to see what makes these shapes and forms. No, the layers on this are what makes it what I would call three hoot, a more challenging painting. But once you see how it's broken down, it's like uh, if you did the still life with me where we took like an hour a day and just did a little bit of work. I'm over here. I'm still blending. See how I'm using this motion and soft pressure to make sure these lines stay soft. As I'm coming back, I can get into my green and blue. Oh, yeah? thank you. They what? reminded me. They were like, do you have an image without the grid? And I was like, oh, I certainly oh my gosh, do. Babe. I'm so sorry, YouTube. Please don't unsub. We normally do. I have skills some days. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, today was a crazy day. <laughs> today, I do not have as many of them. We're just blending this in here. And again, if you want it to print out, uh, we have it also on the website. Indeed, we do. You know, we made sure that that was there. So if that's something that you wanted or needed, we definitely, definitely made sure that you have access to that. See, I'm just very lightly.
Trying to make sure I'm catching his carapace. Carapace? Carapace? Iridescent. Painting is fun. Paint that iridescence, yo. Now, a little of the green and the um, blue. And I'm going to see, I'm pulling that right there. So these little these little values they're important. I'm right here with it. I mean right here. Do you guys like it? Mm -hmm. There we go. See how we're taking that turquoise kind of heavy to the green, but we're blending it in right there. Let's get some turquoise heavier to the blue. Get some more white into it, so we're really seeing it. You know, the most interesting question has come up in chat, and I've been trying to bring to this up here. Yeah, how to answer this? Okay, I don't know. Let's give it a go. We answer questions. This is live. Ask us our questions. So, <laughs> so Jeep Girl was asking Hi. early up, uh, what style does Cinnamon consider her artwork? That, and, and I said, well, that's interesting because this this really doesn't isn't representative of your art style my personal art style now but this has become your art yeah so now i have to rethink about this i i kind of think of what i do as a uh, modern kitsch with a sense of magic you know realism on occasion um <laughs> yeah definitely have especially on the easier videos I i'll take a i'll take a a uh, page from the modern painting party movement because that's really helpful in teaching people how to paint and they get a little blue and a little white um it's certainly uh more expressive i don't often do high realism i can mm -hmm. but it's super time consuming guys which is why you generally only see it in uh, time lapse so see i'm adding that little bit of blue there now and we're going to add some of that little reflection of blue here. What's even harder to say is some of your other work. I like at first I was like, well, you do abstract impressionism with strong use of color. But I was like, well, that's that only describes a very small piece of your other work. Yeah, it it's a weird deal. I'm going to just bring some of this little blue right there because it just touches up. So already he's getting some. He's getting some sass. Some sass. Yeah, um <laughs> get you all introspective. You're all Yeah, like... <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things where you're just like you're so busy doing, you're like, Oh yeah, art styles. Um mm, those are interesting to think about. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? I'm gonna add a little of my yellow into my phthalo green and I'm gonna start coming here and uh really defining the edge of him. He's all like don't define me. I'm all be reflective and shiny and make it hard to see my edges. I can't paint him without thinking of that crab on Moana. <laughs> it's not possible. It's not possible. I love that crab. I know everyone likes the Moana, like a, a sail away song, but I'm like, the crab is everything for me. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, hopefully you're doing okay. Is this okay? Is this working for you guys? Mm-hmm. All right. Are you seeing how it's happening and how it's being built? Is the magic being revealed for you? We're just going to keep adding that, that wonderful little value. And then while it's all still wet, right, and I've rinsed out back into my yellow and my cad red light, and I'm going to make that bright cad orange. And then I'm going to just mix some of the green into it. And we'll start creating that soft transition that we need. See how we're doing? Yeah. Soft transition right here. And it's going to be a little bit of work, especially up here at the um, top of him. We, we will be, we'll be feeling that effort. I'll rinse that out. And now I'm going to definitely go a lot more yellow into that. See how I've done? Now they were asking what genus species this is, and I, I think it's a Volkswagen Super Beetle. 
Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Is um, the photography website that I uh, get my stuff from actually does everything by the genus, which is super aggravating to me because like then I can't <laughs> find it. <laughs> Not my favorite activity that they do. I'm like, guys, you gotta make it easier on me, man. Now, as I'm coming forward and I've got this right here, guess what you can do? You can grab a little bit of that quinacridone. Look at that. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we're just, and if you need glazing liquid to get that nice little blend, get it. See how we're doing? Look at how soft that blend is now. Sometimes it's about the tool. I'm going to zoom in so you can super see the softness of the blend. Softness of the blend. As Chevy Chase would say, be the blend. Be the blend. Be it. Be the blend. Patty Shack was good. <laughs> Not appropriate in today's. <laughs> God, it's so weird, like stuff that we grew up with where I see it now and I like cringe. I'm like, oh. Mm, no, there's a whole bunch of movies that did not stand up to, to the, the test, test of time. time. <laughs> they were like, no, no, that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> not well thought out. Not well thought out. <laughs> it's like comedy is so culturally, it's like situational. It's yeah. like, it's only good for a snapshot in time. I'm going to get some of my orange into it, a little of my brown. I'm making this nice little sort of mid-green. There we go. Still trying to get that. I guess it's why the uh, Greek classics aren't making a reoccurrence in IMAX. So <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. I just, I mean, I like Sparta, but let's not go crazy, right? So a bunch more of the magenta and my brown. You want to catch those values. You want to catch those tones. I'm going to come around again here tones. with a dark green. Just make sure that these lines are sharp because if you really want the beetle to show, he needs to be sharp. His lines need to be sharp. He's, we're going to play against hair versus sharp lines. Hmm. Contrast. Something like that. You know, it's really I'm interesting. getting my blue and green again. I'm going to start working his little facey face a little bit. You know, in photography and filming to some degree, we use focus, the sharpness of the picture, to emphasize where we want the viewer to look. So that. I imagine that this is a good way of doing it too here. Yeah, it really is. I'm going to just... I'm As here. I control the camera. As you control the camera, and I think, I'm thinking really hard. I point your eyes at what I want you to see. Kind of weird when you think about it that way. Yeah. Really <laughs> <is>. <laughs> I'm just I'm blending this right here yeah, and softening that. Look at that softening. Trying to get that. And he's already beetling up a bit, isn't mm -hmm. he? He's beetling up a bit. I'm going to sip my, I'm going to sip my thing. Your Beetlejuice? Three hoot day is a very hard day. <laughs> now, excuse me while I put on my vision enhancers because I have to do this sort of laying in of a particular object and I need to be able to see it well enough to do it. Okay. I got to find one of my round brushes. This is a number four arch up around. I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to get right into my black paint. I may even get some of my blue into this to sort of deepen it and cool it like you do. And I'm going to come right here, bug out from the head, as you know. There we go. And interestingly enough, this has got that. And I'm also going to, while I have this, take this and do some deep work. 
So what I mean what? is I'm going to catch some of my deeper shadows through him where it's going to be a bigger deal. I thought you were getting philosophical for a minute. Well, I mean, when am I not getting philosophical? I think I've been annoying everybody lately. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sherpa. Sherpa doesn't annoy anyone. I might. I might, I might. There's only a 12% group of people who don't like you. Well, I think so. Depends on the day. <laughs> Depends on the day. It's Some true. days the unsubs are hard. <laughs> it's like, where a lot of people go, no, that's not going to, no. And I'm Too like, okay. Many notifications. So, uh, yeah, too many notifications. Oh, you're going to paint all month. Okay, no. That's always funny when someone's like, um, thank you, no. Can I go ahead and get that point out there? And I'm going to come here. I've still got this same mix. We're going to come right behind this. And then along the outside of this. So what we're doing is we're talking about the deep values that are present in the structure. Whether you're painting one of my cute little cutie cute bees or you're painting um, something like this or you're painting silverware, these principles exactly the same. And you're probably thinking, well, well why can't we paint some silverware instead of this book? Because <laughs> he's so pretty. Come on. Like, you got to admit, he's gorgeous. He's a beautiful. I really like him. I mean, I don't want him to crawl on me or nothing. They're very strong little beetles. Yes, they are. They are very strong. They can cling to a mulberry tree like nobody's business. And, and uh, I think that they're not tasty for birds. Mm. They do kind of okay. I like that little claw right there. So these little segments are interesting in my mind. Because they're just so uniquely buggy. Very buggy. There we go. Oh, claw. So already he's, he's beetling out in a he shocking really amount yeah. of way. So again, three hoots are a very, very busy day, but they're super worth it. And three it's about days. the layers, a lot about the layers. Yeah. You have to build up the under layers in order to get the top shiny layers to work. So completely true. I'm going to add another little petal here once I get this all in. I've watched you do this once or twice. Have you? I wanted to get this all in a little bit before I did. There we go. Now I've got all this here. I can then get a little of my gray going. And go ahead and put a little bit back here. So see there's two ways to sharpen him. There's subtractive painting, which is what we just did there, or additive painting, which is where we're putting paint on. You know, we kind of like did some negative space painting here where we pulled away some of his face using some of a form we thought we were going to interact with. Now, mm. let me turn around and say hi to everybody. I'm going to sip a coffee, and then I'm going to get back into the last part of it. We're almost through, through, through. Full three hoot today, guys. All right. All right. 
But easy painting's coming up. So tomorrow's painting is so much easier. This is just one of those wonderful transitional paintings. If you've been doing a few tutorials and you just need to shore up a couple techniques, this is really fun. And if you're a beginner and you're like, I can do a lot of stuff, I just need some extra encouragement. This really gets you through it. Do we have any questions before I get into the final run of him? Let's see here. Do, do, do. Hmm. Longer than my usual bear. You know, I wasn't prepared for questions. I was kind of over here. Oh, they, they were they were like some interest in you doing different styles of paintings. Oh, that was interesting. An Egyptian style. I was like, hmm, what would an Egyptian style? You mean like, style? A, like a High Kingdom kind of I Egyptian don't know. style? Like a... Or like, like a current, because there's like a whole current art scene going on. So like, you got to give That's me a true. time period. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see some from the Hyksos period myself, you know, but that's just me. He's just making fun of me from something that happened in college. No, no, I, you know. You really, you're not going to just I, go, Akhenaten! <laughs> no, I just actually think there's some actually good artwork from there. So, probably... I had a good professor, sculpture. like, there was this whole period of time that all you had to do was just say Akhenaten, and it was, like, correct for everything. But, that aside, there <laughs> was actually... He's a little obsessed. <laughs> they, they, there were some sculptors in There Egypt. are some... Look, they had the some... thing to think about when you're looking at ancient art, or even primitive art, is those people were factually craftsmen. They could absolutely make something that it was realistic and was objective but if you think about that this was the only method of visual communication and it was these objects were incredibly spiritual and and often sacred a lot of those things that we take as being simplified are really about a complex communication of those different layers of human experience hmm. sorry soapbox dum, dum, dum. they look good i like to good. get back and look at the All artwork right. too so sometimes what I do is this is my version of standing across the room and looking at him. I like to take him in. I may even on occasion for the rest of this do that, like stand up, back up and look at it. I highly recommend to you, if you're painting on a table, get up, put your artwork vertical to you in the vertical mm -hmm. plane and look at it. Or sometimes stand up over it so you have a better view. Yeah. If you're painting flat, it's going to skew a lot of your work. Just an interesting little thing you might not know. And if you absolutely can't get up because of mobility issues, remember you can take a picture with your cell phone and that will often give you the same effect. Cool. Are we ready to continue so? on beetling? All right. Beetle, beetle. I'm going to back up. You back up, look at your beetle. I'm back up, look at my beetle. Okay, I'm pretty actually happy with the direction the beetle is going. The beetle's looking pretty good. Beetle looking pretty good. Beetle is not disappointing me in any way. I like you, beetle. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for not sucking. <laughs> As if it would be like the painting's fault if things went wrong. Like, I blame the painting. <laughs> Beetle, You've let, you me, let down, me down, painting. Yep. Nope. No. That's not how it works. And again, the, the, the paintings on the rest of the weekend, not all this hard. Taking his little thorax there, and then I'm going to do another little one here. That's a little more under the eye. So sometimes you got to look at that. No, oh, is that the right location? No, oh no, let me get that again. They were doing that little segmenting thing. I like these little weird antenna. Fun stuff right there, I think. Mm. So that is very, very good. A little bit. All right, now we've got to get in here and do some of these like little highlight reels. They're going to make him even more spectacular and special and, and beautiful in every conceivable way. Let's go get into our yellow a little more, glazing it up. And let's start talking about these little hot spots. So when I'm saying hot spots, I mean area that light might be, you know, kind of more actively on. You can see I'm leaving a little dark line there to sort of imply a little bit of a ridge. I'm wiggling that brush back and forth, keeping those lines soft. Glazing liquid is really helping me because glazing is, there's a lot of methods of blending. There is wet into wet blending, right? That's where the paint's still wet. There's dry brush blending, and then there's glazing. And then there's also color theory, which does 
some cool blending effects if you need it. There's a little hot spot of yellow right here, so I'm going to start talking about that through here. I think it kind of comes forward a bit. There we go. More yellow, and this time a little bit of white. See how we're doing? That yeah, looks really cool. Now we can. Now I'm going to get into that sort of orange. Put some orange and maybe some magenta into that orange. There we go. We're going to come in and work this little space right here. Add some of those little pops of interesting color. It's going to be important to capture these. Yep, pop some there. And then even, I'm going to bring some here and there. It's nice stuff. There's some other places up here I could probably use this, and so it's a great time to start to work this in. As you might want to. Mm. And you can see as we start pulling in those highlights, it really starts to bring him to life. That's where he's going to find his true space. I just wiped off a little bit of paint just to make sure my brush wasn't overloaded. I'm still doing this wiggling motion, trying to blend this out. Add a little bit of a hot spot there. I see little bits of hot spots here and there, right? Touch little places. Now right here, it's kind of like that hot spot of green and a little bit of orange. So what we do is we just grab a little bit of the cad red. See if we can tune into that. This is where I may put some dot purple into the mix just to create some interesting depths of things. Because mm. it will do some interesting stuff. I can take a little of it in the magenta and interestingly enough, come over to the green. And make a very dark, but not cool color right here. Blend, 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 blend. Blend, 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 blend. And I'm going to keep working that magenta and maybe into the yeah, we're doing right there. I like that. He's starting to be a thing. Who's starting to be a thing? Him. He's starting mm. to be a thing. Right? And catch that perfect value. There we go. And I, I see a little kiss of something right there that I want to capture. Nice. Interestingly enough, I'm going to come on the edge here which is some of that it comes around here. 
come up along the edge here with some of this. I'm going to get some of my white, just a smidge of my yellow, but mostly my white. Start to give this flare on his back. Again, maybe increase the flare right here. Come there. Come here and we're going to pick up just a few of these brighter highlights. Just a few places. Not everywhere. Just where you see them. I'm going to get back into this sort of yellow orange. Maybe talk about that a little bit right here. Oh, those are, that really makes those pop. Yeah, it does. It's just that's where it's going to come from. That's where it's going to pop. Wipe my brush out. Make sure that's nice and blended. Come and add some of this yellow green right here. Oop. Paints actually held up really well. Hmm. Not dried out real fast on me. It's been nice. I'm going to add some of that here. I'm going to come right here with that too. Just give him some of that. And then as I come down, definitely want to highlight some of this back here. nice yeah so really where we're at is a couple reflections some hairs and his face and some little bits on his legs so like if I were to take this and this and a little bit of that right you know he's got some of this sort of reflected right here A little bit there. Oh, this little crazy orange right here. I'm down there. Not that much on this particular leg. I'm going to grab some of my green and a smidge of my yellow and start to. A little more yellow, uh, a little more yellow than that, so it's visible. Start to hit some of these. Just some of the spots where he would have bits of metallic showing. Right, not everything on him. Like right here on the leg is a little bit of metallic, and then definitely right here. All down the front. And we're going to come down and catch some of that. And you can see that it's just starting to, for, to make him just come out of the blue. He's just coming out of his shell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what's wonderful. He can come out of his shell, and that's nice. Absolutely nice. All right. You know, we've got this purple, and purple makes kind of a nice uh, deep shadow on him because if you get any white into it and you show it anywhere at all it will make some of hey honey i don't know where honey went hmm. okay i'm adding some of this here just a couple of these little mixes a few places right yeah just a little bit of these crazy fun colors that help him stand out. Now I need a little more yellow here. I'm 
All right. A little more yellow. And I'm just, see, I'm like making this like kind of scratchy, little crazy little mark. Yeah. I'm going to get back into it, make sure that pigment's nice and solid in it. All right, kids. We're doing good. Yeah, this is turning out nice. Bring that here. Maybe bring some of those little hot spots here and there. Because you can see there's these like bright yellow hollow hot spots, aren't there? This is another nice way to show the intense reflectiveness that he is actually sporting. All right. Now he's starting to, now he's popping. Yeah, it really is. It's nice sometimes to get a little reflection on here. So if I've got any black of them, get get into it and make kind of a this sort of blue black. And right here at the top of his eye. And here on the outside, I'm gonna start that reflection. But I will exaggerate it with a much brighter value. So that his little eye looks kind of, you know, wet and things. Now, I'm going to put out some fluid white paint again, and I'm going to personally put out some yellow ochre in fluid just because I feel like um, that's going to help me a lot get this next color. You could use just your yellow. I just really want a high blend. Ooh, that's like, didn't want to come out nicely. I hmm. said no. But I'm going to get back into that monogram liner. And I'm going to load up with this yellow and a little bit of the white. And we're going to. Oh, that's cool. Get some of these little hairs. Give them some little hairs. This little leg needs some hairs, doesn't it? Mm hmm Because what do bugs have? They have lots of little hairs. That's a thing they got going on. And they're very useful, important little hairs. Little sensors. They are. They are very important little sensors. You could do this with cad yellow. You just want to not have it be like a white white, but still light enough where you can kind of see it. All right. And we got a little hair here we can talk about. No. There's some wonderful hair. Comes right over here. Look at that. Bug hairs. Fun to paint. <laughs> they are. But they are. They seriously are. They add the details. Well, and those details can sometimes give us space to understand what we're looking at. You know, you want those details. And then maybe do some at the face here real quick. The beetle is in the details. The beetle is in the details. Little bits of these little hairs. We're nearly done, actually, guys. Really? Yeah. Wow. Go figure. Okay, I'm here. A lot of, lot of little hairs. So I've got to really talk Beetle about Beetle fuzz. There's a lot of fuzz to deal with here. Be the fuzz. See the fuzz. Believe the fuzz.
Beetle's got beetle fuzz. Yeah. Beetle got beetle. <laughs> beetle got stuff to do, right, yo? He got his shine on. He does. <laughs> he's got stuff to do. You know, he's got hair that really kind of comes. Got to put a shine in your eyes so you can see in the dark. Yeah, you really do. You guys, are you having a good time keeping that pressure light, getting those little hairs in? Sometimes those details are really where a painting is or isn't coming together. And when you can paint objects like this, when you, when you embrace the painting of stuff like this, what you're doing is you're saying, I can paint anything. And you want to be that person that says that. Those little, those are, which brush are you using for that? This is the monogram liner ruby satin by Silver Brush. It's just a really good detail brush. Gotcha. And That's what's Take care of it. Stuff. It will last a long time, and it will do a lot of good stuff for you. You could use Sherpa soap. I could use soap, I do. <laughs> I absolutely do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put some of these little hair details. Whoop. A few of them on his back. Because I feel like they're very beetly. Beetly. I'm going to get some of my white. Oh, where are you at? I'll come right here. You're up. Make a little highlight. It's a little, I guess it's kind of like a little knee. Just catch those little, little shiny bits. Mm hmm. What happened? I like it. Because they do, they happen. And when you make them, they go really well. And I feel like I'm pretty happy with him. He's turned out really nice. Uh, I like how he came out. I feel like we got the basic concept of painting like a metallic green beetle. I'm going to go ahead and give him a signature. I hope you guys will show up for the boat tomorrow. Mm. I think that's it's going to be definitely more of a two hoot. Two hoot. Two hooter. <laughs> Much more of a two hooter. I get it. I think the, yeah, I like that. Pretty happy with that little fellow. He really did turn out nice. And we'll turn around. Give him a look. Okay. Let's get back from him and give him a look. Oh, see? Isn't that fun? That turned out really nice. You can paint a beetle. Yeah. A crazy, shiny, multicolored beetle. And you can paint a fork. And you can paint a street light. You can paint a shiny rock underwater. It's just... At some point in the painting process, you're going to go, oh, I'm not really painting anything. I'm just painting light shadow form color texture. Mm. And so you just start to see those things within your reference. And you go, this has this texture. It has these colors. I can mix these colors and I can make these textures. And if I do them together, my brain will go, oh, it's a lovely garden beetle that is on a, you know, black and white flower. And it just makes a fun thing. So hopefully that was exciting to you. Definitely check out the new videos. Oh, please, oh, please, because I think they're so good. Oh, yeah. Put them on. Relax to them. Come back tomorrow because I think we're going to have a good time. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you with the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.